Welcome to our webinar, Guest the Speaker Series, and it's sponsored by uh, Nebraska Department of Education, What Language, OPS, and the CLTAK-12. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> it's sponsored, uh, it's sponsored. Uh, welcome to our webinar. Uh, the Spring Guest Speaker Series, sponsored by NDE What Language, OPS, and the CLTA uh, K-12. And today we have invited Ilya Evans from uh, Lincoln Public Schools and Chris Foreman from Lincoln Public Schools as well, right? Both of you are LPS. Okay. Yep. Thank you so much for coming. And I actually... Um, uh, attended their webinar at NYLA. It's awesome. And I'm really grateful that they are willing to present for us. Now, Ilya and Chris, please take on. Okay, thank you, Crystal. Thank you everyone for coming. I hope you find the information very useful. Um, and um, we tried to make the presentation interactive, so hopefully everything works out. Okay, our presentation is about power of formative feedback. Uh, during the classes, uh, it's a good way to know the students, to uh, know what to prepare for the next classes, uh, to see what what I as a teacher can improve and everything uh, is done through feedback. So we have um, uh, objectives, yeah, our main objectives um, is uh, to know seven keys of effective formative feedback and how to apply them. Um, our presentation is based on the article that actually Chris found um, and we read it, we found it very, very useful in our daily life as a teacher um, and we would like to share with you. Yeah, thank you, Yulia. I thought I'd uh, uh, come in. Chris Borman here, I'm also at uh, Lincoln Public Schools. Um, and this is this article I found, and it really kind of changed the way I perceive teaching. So uh, it kind of broke down some things that I previously thought, and it made my life easier. And so hopefully by the end of the presentation, um, you're able to uh, take something from here that might make your lesson plan planning easier, and then also um, have you give you an opportunity to um, be more in the moment. I feel like teachers are always like thinking five steps ahead of the time and um, kind of the idea behind feedback and some of the things we're going to talk about is living in the moment and continuously responding to student work um, and continuously giving feedback. Um, one, one quote that I really liked from this article was teach less and provide more feedback. So um, I know teachers always get wrapped up in teach, 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 okay? But really it's about the students and what they can do. Um, and so if I'm teaching less and letting the students explore more and then giving feedback on that performance, um, that's easier for me. And um, and it's it's a lot less grading and it, it, it has really transformed some of the things that uh, I, I believed personally be before this article. So, um, so. Thank you, Yulia, for, for helping me helping me uh, do this. And let's go ahead and get started. Yay. OK, we would like to start with an interactive activity. And if you would like to, um, to talk, please let us know. Uh, first, we decided to do breakout rooms. But since we do not have a lot of participants, we probably could do it as a as a as one group so the first activity is to describe a picture a picture will be provided and you can also use it with the students a picture will be provided to one student or to one group of students and they have to say 
and describe the picture to say what is on the picture using a target language. Um, the students who do not see the picture should draw the picture. And then at the end, they compare the results. It's a great uh, team building activity, icebreaker, uh, just a fun activity for Fridays. If you do any fun, fun activities on Fridays, the students always uh, have fun doing it. Um, okay, uh, let's look at our picture. Anyone would like to talk and describe? Do we have a volunteer? What kind of picture you want us to draw? We will show we will show you the picture. Oh, you will show us a picture? Okay. Mm -hmm. But we will ask only you, you talk and everyone else not even to look at the screen, please. Would you like to do it? Well, I, how, how about this? How about I, uh, if I don't have any volunteers, I don't know. Did you, were you able, did you say you were interested? Uh, this is a picture uh, my student wants draw. Can I use this to show? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just don't show it to us yet. <laughs> oh, okay. And we will all draw. Here is a picture. No, don't show it, don't show, don't show. <laughs> just describe it to us, describe it to us, please. And we will draw what is located where, uh, in which corner, and then we will compare the original work with our masterpieces. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. This is a Chinese story. Uh, yeah. A river, and there is a little horse want to cross the river. Okay, so there is a river? Yes. Okay. A river and a little horse trying yes. to cross? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> the horse in the middle of the picture or close to the end of the picture? It's in the beginning. Okay. Okay, horse. Well, I don't know if I can draw a horse. Well, go. You, you use a pencil line, simple, like, sim simplify the picture. Okay. Okay, horse. And what else? Is there somebody on the horse? Beside the horse is a squirrel. A squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> what are they doing at the uh, at the river? Uh, the, uh, the horse want to cross the river. Okay. Does the squirrel want to cross the river too? The squirrel said, "No, do not." Hmm. Are the, is there any uh, people in the in the picture? Uh, there is um, uh, actually is a flower bag in the horse back. A flower, a flower. There's a meal in the one side of the river. <laughs> okay. Are there any clouds on the, in the sky? Huh? Um, oh, is a very beautiful green grass beside the river. Are there trees next to the river? Uh, in this picture, no. No, no trees. <laughs> What other important parts of the picture do we need to have? Um, this is a, a one, one animal is the squirrel. The other animal is a big cow, okay. a cow, a cattle, cow. 
Is the cow on the same side of the river as the horse and squirrel? Yes, because the uh, the, the horse want to cross the river. The squirrel said, no, you are going to die. And the, the, the cow said, no, it's very shallow. You can go anyway. Mm, cow. All right. Uh, do you mind showing us the picture you're describing so we can compare our drawing the, uh, drawing at home to, to the picture you were describing? Yeah. Can we maybe stop sharing screen so we can see yep. all, all our masterpieces? <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's a beautiful. <laughs> you did a very beautiful job. Thank you so much. I think because you explained it so well. Wow, you, you are so good. So the story, the student gave me the full picture, but I think I, I want to make things simple. So I just said about a uh, horse, a uh, squirrel, and cat, cow, cattle, then, and river, green grass, then. Oh. It's okay? Yes, excellent. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. So this is one activity that you could use with the students and that you model. And actually, uh, one way to use this activity is one person gives the direction, the other draws, or asks a question. I think for higher students, for higher level students, it will be even more beneficial to ask questions. And then they can provide feedback to each other. You can make bigger groups, groups of three or four, probably four maximum, or work in pairs. Excellent, thank you so much, thank you. So we, uh, sorry, I wanna add that we, we really like this activity to illustrate that our students have a blank slate. They don't really, they only know what we teach them, right? Um, and they have to do something before we, once they do something, we're able to add to it rather than just just try to build them up from, you know, from the, from the ground, right? So we started out that there was a river and then we added the cow and the squirrel. And was there, what was the cow saying? What with the, the grass. So that's kind of the purpose of feedback um, and kind of the activities that we, we were trying to gear towards this presentation was activities that students can do with the language and it's interactive, but then also it's feedback reliant, okay? Without our questions and without um, some details, okay? Uh, this, this would be very, very difficult, almost impossible. So we're asking questions. Uh, you're answering them. We're talking about details of, you know, at the beginning of the page, we have this and things like that. All that's feedback and all that is interactive. And it really illustrates that that learning and teaching is a two way street. The teachers learn from their students. They learn where they're at, what they need. Students are also learning. What do they need? Where, where are they going? So um, we really like that. I do this um, a little bit different. So I post a picture with my projector in the front of the screen and uh, I have, I do it in pairs and one student faces the back wall and the other student faces the, the, the projector. And then they're able to describe what works great for de descriptions. What's this person look like? Um, it works great with um, uh, things like that. Okay. Food. You can talk about if there's a, if there's different foods on a plate, you know, um, you, one person describes it, the other person illustrates it. Um, and then like, like Yulia said in, in my upper level classes, hopefully the people that are drawing that can't see the, the picture are able to illustrate and ask questions. So where am I putting this? What else do I need? Things like that are all great questions. So, um, that was just an interactive activity. It's harder to do on zoom. Uh, <laughs> but thank you for volunteering and, and helping us out there. Actually, Chris, I like your idea about asking the question, is there any uh, something inside, besides, I like the question you, you continue asking. It's very good interactive with you and student, I think. And I think you can also differ differentiate this activity, right? So based on the student needs or student strengths, you can even create some questions and offer the students, or you can, um, uh, you can focus on 
a certain certain uh, information like if you talk about food picture with the food or if you want to expand the knowledge um, as well yeah thank you and then yeah like prepositions like where and then you can talk about at the top at the bottom to the sides so then they're they're getting useful information that they have to that they have to use so uh the it takes a little bit of time to get used to this to do this in uh a second language because students' languages are so limited, but um, it's fun, it's interactive, it's a good brain break, and uh, you'll be surprised. So some of my kids, I'm like, wow, I didn't think about, you You said this, I didn't think that that was an option of what, uh, of, of something you could say about this because creativity kind of kind of kicks in with students and um and it's 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 a great thing to, to see and takes little prep right we'll just post a picture in my in my case one student faces the back wall one student faces the front wall and, and just describes it and, and goes so um Yuli, anything to add before i move on um no i think we are good that was our picture <laughs> This was our picture that we were going to describe. So when we did this in, in person, so. <laughs> uh, so we are focused on feedback and how feedback can, we can use feedback to teach less and have students do more. So um, we thought that as just kind of, uh, just kind of get things going. Um, if you could put it in the chat here, um, what do you, what does feedback look like? What does it sound like? And what does it feel like in a, a world language classroom, right? I would say our feedback's a little bit different because we have to assess over verbal skills, writing skills, listening skills, and reading skills. So what, what does that look like in, in your classroom or in your setting? Go ahead, type in something. Um, Crystal, I loved your comment about the horse looking like a four-legged duck. <laughs> But go ahead, uh, put something in the chat. Uh, what, do, what do you think feedback looks like, sounds like, and feels like? Or you could probably say, if you would like. Here we got some. Mm -hmm. In target language can be, in, in, yes, in target language. Mm -hmm. Positive mm -hmm. and constructive. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Excellent. Feedback's a great way to build relationships. So we talk a lot of, we're in my school about relationships. And if students trust you, if they like you and they respect you, then you're going to get a lot more out of them. Um, and so that relationship, getting to know them as a person um, is really important. And feedback's a great way to acknowledge and say, great job, you did this well. Okay, and kind of build up some self-esteem and also break down that teacher-student barrier that sometimes exists. Right. Um, I also like to look into strengths of the students. And in every activity, you still can find a positive, something positive. So to see, to the, to, um, the student work, the student feedback to the student should be based, in my opinion, should be based on the strengths. Always start with something that it was great. And then to add, however, here and here could be, a, um, uh, could the work could be improved. We got uh, a comment about how uh, feedback can be a rephrased answer. So I do that in my class all the time where a student gives a response and then I, I reinforce, yes, that's correct. And then I reinforce that with the language. Or like Yulia said, if I'm if if they're missing a piece, then I can I can use those words like great job, but I can um, and then I can shift the focus to to something that I was I was asking for. So um here. 
what makes feedback effective? What what uh, what aspects of feedback make it effective in a, in a classroom? Okay, so um, one thing for me that I'm working on is it takes me a long time to grade. And if a student turns in a worksheet or a test, it takes me several days. And then there's several days where a student doesn't know how they did. So one thing for feedback for me that I'm trying to put an emphasis on is it needs to be quick. What else, what other things could make feedback effective? I could add uh, one thing about meaningful feedback. It should mean something. It's important not just say good job, but it's important to provide some information that can be used in the future. Um, for me personally, as a teacher, uh, meaningful feedback would be an example. The students took exit ticket and they wrote in the exit ticket on a sticky note, they wrote so many words uh, they know uh, based on their words they uh, wrote, I see what else I need to, uh, I need to prepare for, for tomorrow. I need to uh, highlight, uh, I need to look at the spelling, for example. So this gives me a lot, a lot of meaning how I can improve my teaching. Timely, yes, timely. All right. Um, <clears throat> Yuli, you want to uh, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, so, go for it? I like, feel like, like I've been talking quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> if students uh, can speak and use the sentences, then we know they are master it. Yes, I agree. I agree. And I always uh, tell my students when they create sentences and it's something that they try on their own, I always praise them because this is the best way of learning the language and use the language to create your own sentences. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as we talked about, as we are talking about feedback, so feedback is an essential part of learning. So it goes both way, not just teacher to the students or students to the teacher, but it's both, uh, both ways. It influences future performance. And like in my example, when I collect uh, students' work, I receive this way, I receive feedback, how I can improve my teaching. It can be done by students and by teachers. Yeah. And uh, it is the information, how we are doing on the progressing to our goal. Yeah. So feedback should be uh, uh, tied to the objectives. Um, it can help to create positive learning environment. And we mentioned that um, it's about being positive. Yeah. Um, can be one of the most powerful influences on achievement. Yes. And this is goes together with the relationship and trust. And teach less, provide more feedback. Um, Chris, you already mentioned that phrase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that phrase is really important. Sometimes I feel, I, I personally feel I'm like I'm teaching too much. My students aren't doing enough. And so then I need to take a step back and say, you need to go play around with the language and I will be there to ask you questions and clarify anything you need. Um, I, I don't, nobody speaks a perfect, nobody speaks perfectly. So I'm a Spanish teacher. I don't speak perfect Spanish, right? I don't speak perfect English. Um, so I focus on communication. And um, with that being said, if I can create that positive atmosphere, uh, and those relationships like Yulia talked about, then I'm able to, uh, students are more apt to try and, and play around and make mistakes. And, and that's our goal. Um, and then that's where the teacher comes in and says, hey, great job at this, but I think you will, you're trying to say this, this is how you say that, rather than, um, rather than, you know, a teacher stands in front of the room, teach, teach, teach for an hour, and then, and then that, that that's all there is to that, so. That sounds more like a lecture, I would say. And I would add, Chris, I really like that you mentioned communication because communication, we can connect with students' personality, their culture through communication. We learn more about students. They provide us more about feedback and we learn how to communicate, how to provide feedback in an um, appropriate, uh, positive way. 
Um, Crystal also mentioned that it's also an opportunity to teach growth mindset. They can always be better with feedback. Yes, open-mindedness. Absolutely. All right. So um, the purpose of feedback is students, uh, it, it provides a roadmap. Where are we going? What do we want to learn? Um, so just, uh, I'm going to, we'll give you about 20, 30 seconds. How did you use feedback to help students meet your learning objective to, in today's lesson or the last lesson you taught? So I'm going to put 20 seconds on the clock and just uh, silently think about those interactions you had with students and how did those interactions help that student or those students uh, learn, uh, learn, learn what you intended? So uh, we'll give it about 20 seconds. Uh, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to think about today's lesson and, and what, I, what I did to help students. And I know Yulia will be too. She's a great reflective practitioner. I, I know that <laughs> from working with her. So we'll put 20 seconds here. Uh, and just just think about those interactions and how feedback was used to to help students along the way. All right, uh, that was 20 seconds. Um, feel free if you'd like to share, um, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll start talking and then if somebody wants to jump in. So in my, in my lesson today, um, what I did is I played a game called Place Your Bets. Um, I, I posted a paragraph, a short paragraph in Spanish. Students read it, we talked about it in Spanish. And then I took the paragraph away and asked them one question about that paragraph and they on their whiteboards they wrote down the answer and they didn't show their partner and then after they were done writing down their answer they bet fake money based on how confident they were in their response so if they thought they got it right then they're going to bet more if they bet less or if they weren't quite sure they're going to bet less and then uh, we discussed it so um, I went around the room. I gave positive feedback. Hey, great job. I like what you, what you said there. Hey, I, uh, I like where you're going, but let's try this. And um, it, it was kind of a game. I was able to give individual feedback and we gave whole class feedback because I announced the answer. And I said, this is, this is what I was trying to do. This was the main point that I was asking you to do. Um, so it was interactive. Students got timely feedback right away. And it was fun because they were gambling, so to speak. Um, and uh, they, they had a lot of fun with it. I know gambling is not a good thing to uh, to promote, but it was fake money. And I think teenagers, uh, my teenagers can kind of disassociate real gambling from Spanish gambling. So that was something that I did. I was able to give whole whole class feedback and say, this is what I was going for. This was the most important uh, things. These were the vocab words that I was expecting you to use. Um, and then I was able to walk around and listen to conversations and have kids say, oh, you're right because of this. Oh, I was right because of this and had those had those interactions. So that was one thing I did in class today that I really enjoyed. My kids really seemed to really enjoy it too. So, um, Yulia, uh, did I, you have I, I, yeah, something I that can, you were doing? All the awesome things you do in your class? Um, yes, uh, we are preparing for a quiz with my level one students, and I posted a Quizlet link with the vocabulary that they can study. Um, we need the vocabulary to be able to put food items in the correct stores. Um, however, the feedback I received last week, the students do know, do know how to uh, say uh, in German stores, how to name the stores, but the things that we can buy at the stores are still not there. Um, so I ask them to work individually 
and to go through the Quizlet through to go through all the vocabulary and write down on the left side the vocabulary that they know. This way they can practice extra writing. And on the uh, left, on the right side, and on the left side, uh, to write down the vocabulary that they can study or need to study more to write it in English and in German. So I walked through the classroom and I talked to the students. I looked at the vocabulary that they need to study so I can use some, some of them tomorrow to practice. But students helped themselves to provide their own feedback, just to evaluate their own learning. And I think that is also an important part that was done timely, that was transparent for them. Uh, that was goal referenced. So they know that for tomorrow they need to study the vocabulary. Awesome. And Crystal wrote, um, uh, she uses sticky notes on homework um, and the feedback uh, pattern or uh, routine is uh, four elements, acknowledge effort. So we're building the, that positive relationship. One suggestion. Okay. That's going to, that's going to, Help, help students grow into the, the next opportunity. Um, and encouragement is also going to uh, create positive uh, a, a positive relationship with the student and same with the sticker. So that's awesome. Thank you. Mm, uh, I would like to share one. Yeah, yeah. please. Um, so we are doing like a daily routine um, report. So it is kind of, um, um, you know, students learns to get the time they have learned uh, morning, afternoon expressions, and also their school activities, including like uh, wake up, do homework, dinner, and then also use after, after dinner, after school, um, something because um, Chinese um, structure is grammatically simple, right? But the characters are a challenge for them. And you cannot, and there are certain characters is really tough, for example, sleep. Okay, there are so many characters, so many lines to draw, so students can hardly recognize it. So we do uh, like a circle questions uh, and then feedback with teacher, with classmates, everybody involved. So um, this is a kind of a, a project I designed for as a big project. So uh, in order to make sure every one of them go to go from step one to the final step four, I divided the project into four steps. Step one, each one of them get an identity. So I create, um, my classrooms is 20 people. Okay, so I create 20 different ID. Like the student will forget, it's not their own name, it's someone else. And then they have all the similar patterns, but different information, like the wake up time, go to school time, and then uh, have Chinese classroom time. And then lunchtime, we know lunchtime different, right? And after school activities, there are several, it's all together, there are eight uh, activities, can be either after school or after dinner. So it's interwined. So students go, um, our goal is that they know how to express that, they can recognize next time, uh, recognize them. And as well in the end, they should be able to write them out. And I, uh, I think today I feel very happy because this goal is I think 80% achieved. Um, this is how I do um, this activity. Um, of course, it lasts for three days, right? Three different cl different classroom times. So each student study their own identities and they report to their classmates. So in this way, they help each other to get their meanings. And of course, teacher will help them, right? And the second round is a bingo game with nine questions based on their information. So they are going to fill in their own information and they stand up asking another two uh, classmates. So this is a second round um, to reveal their information and to know the other information. But still not people, people couldn't get it, right? And the third round, uh, we, are doing, um, we are doing a report. This report is like one student come to the report, the other student use smart board on the, uh, on, in front of the classroom. Well, the other students are filling a form for people information, including all these nine questions. 
So one is reporting, the other listen and record. The rest of the student follow up and correcting the mistakes while the person writing on the board, right? So it is like a several circle of communication and feedback. One, so I get students right on the board so I can be free to walk in the classroom, walk around and make sure all students get involved and make sure some weak students need some uh, immediate help on um, this time. So for, for example, they, they couldn't catch up, okay? They don't know where to write. So you point them out to help them. And then um, student one reporting, student two writing on the board, and these two are checking each other because they have to make sure they understand each other. And they are all in target language, okay? Uh, the Chinese language. And the circle, the other circle students checking is the students in the seats. They respond. They respond to their writings. Sometimes they help the one who is writing on the board. So this is another kind of feedback. Forever, I am a teacher, as a teacher, I walk in around, I walk around the classroom, right? I give them feedback like correct. That could be better if you say that way. Or if someone make a mistake, I would I wouldn't say you you are wrong, right? I would say if if I were you, I would say this way. I would rephrase their response. So they are having their peer corrections, and they are having they are having like a pair because the the two is in the front, the two are in the front, right? They have pair corrections, and they have teacher corrections. So we are doing all circle circle questions, circle something, right? Each of them have marks because they know their own well, their own information well. And then in the end, I pull up a new one that nobody has the same, but it's the same structure. And they can immediately figure out what is information and can read it out precisely. And some students can write out without looking at the references. So it is amazing to see that and they help each other and all of them feel accomplished in some way. Even awesome. the, yeah, even the weak student feel, oh, they learned something, okay, they get it. If they have the same similar piece of information with 10 lines, 10 long sentences, okay, each line, they line them and they can still figure out what is this about? They, they learned how to find the keywords and how to find the key information they're supposed to know. And by, by this, so we have five students report, right? Another five students take down the notes on the board. And then the other 10 students, because we are taking turns, the other 10 students on their seats, but keep responding, responding, responding. So I think this is a pretty good feedback. And then after that, teacher know everything, right? Teacher knows, and um, each step they earn a stamp. I have different stamps. So I stamp them or I ask the students them for me so I can be available to higher learning, right? Higher learning cycle. And then in the end, everybody finish it. And as long as they collect and they like to collect stamps and it's cute stamps. So they collect it and then take a picture, some meat on canvas, we use canvas. And then for me, it's a lot of, a lot of time saving. So I know all the students get it. As long as I see their submission, I just give them score. So <laughs> yeah, for this time, like yeah, I save my time. I know the students' responses right in the class and I correct them right on site. So this is a good way, I think, for learning a language. Awesome. This yeah, I love that. I love how you broke, you talked about breaking it in four steps and then um, you scaffold it. So it started out with the easy and kind of built in, built into several days. Um, and I also like the aspect of students giving feedback to each other. We, we have, we talk a little bit about that later on in our presentation where it's very power. It's a powerful tool. If students know uh, where they're going and where they're at, and they can able to give each other feedback we're only one person in the class, the teacher, but you can have everybody be a teacher, so to speak. And that, that that's a really powerful uh, learning opportunity. So those are a couple of things that stuck out um, to me uh, with, with what you were saying. Uh, so thank you. I have a couple other comments um, in the chat here. So using questions to encourage and uh, encourage students to speak and interact uh, via interpersonal communication um, and then give constructive remarks and feedback 
um, based on that. And then also having an inclusive uh, classroom and um, using humor to, to keep kids motivated and engaged, which is awesome. So thank you very much. Uh, that, that was awesome. So um, we have, a, uh, Yulia, did you want to do a Pear Deck or did we just want to talk about it? We could just do a uh, one, two, three, four. Let's, let's talk since the group okay. is okay, if it's so, okay. Um, let's do this. So my gosh, sorry. Um, are you able to, to see my, uh, yes. I, I can see that. So I can shorten this like that. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. It's been a while since I've used Zoom. So we have a couple examples. Um, so of things that happen in class. Um, and so we'll do this. It will, uh, in the chat, we'll just have you put one, if it's effective form of feedback two if it's somewhat three, if it's eh, not so much and four, not effective at all. Okay. So one is effective feedback Two, somewhat three eh, and four, not effective at all. So here's the example. Uh, the teacher grades a worksheet, right or wrong, and hands it back to the student with a letter grade on it. So is that effective? If that's effective, go ahead and write one. Um, if it's somewhat effective, two, uh, eh, three, and not effective at all, four. Okay. So in the chat, I see a couple fours and a couple threes. Um, for me, it all depends on what the student does with the letter grade. Okay. Um, I've had students that just get their, get their worksheet back. They see that they got an A or a B and then they just throw it away. That doesn't tell them anything uh, useful. Okay. It just, uh, there's no reflective process. We want students to reflect on what did they do right? What did they do wrong and why? Okay. Um, and so I would agree that it's probably three or four. Um, we can tap into higher level thinking skills if we have those conversations with students or um, you're able to give students the opportunity to redo it based on your feedback. Hey, try this and turn it back into me, okay? Um, if we're really grading for learning, okay, what does a student, what has a student learned? Then we need to give multiple opportunities for them to do that, okay? Rather than here's a worksheet and this is what you did, we're gonna move on. Okay. Um, when I started teaching, this is, this is what I did. And I realized that um, it does, it's not very meaningful, right? For students, this is just how they did on this one worksheet. And if they're not reflecting and thinking about what they did and how they did it and why, then it doesn't, that grade and that feedback doesn't mean much. So um, a couple of pieces of advice for grading homework and quizzes to make it more effective uh, stick with stick to one concept uh, and sequence the questions so they become more challenging. Students will see how simple processes and understandings can be applied to more complex sentences or more complex um, thoughts. Okay, if you give something that's really complicated and number one is very complicated, they're gonna they're they're gonna lose hope and then just just not not do it or they're going to struggle. So another piece of advice uh, that we talked about is provide meaningful answers. Answer why an answer is correct and how that answer can be reached. Um, that's going to help them be able to duplicate that and have further success. Um, another thing is team it with a reflective activity to increase metacognitive pra practices. So we want students to know how they learn and therefore they can apply those processes to different um, to, to, to different learning ex experiences, okay? We want our learners to be flexible. We want them to be able to apply learnings from one thing to another thing and make connections. Um, so knowing how you think, and, and Yulia mentioned knowing her students' strengths, that, that's really important. Um, and finally, connect each question to the objective or per performance expectations. Students should know what, uh, where we're going. Okay, what do we need to do? And then they should also know what success looks like. Okay, if we have clearly defined our end point or what our objective, then they can self monitor and give each other feedback along the way until we get up to that, to that succeeds. So, um, Yulia, you want to go ahead and talk about this slide? 
Yeah, sure. Okay, this is a second example. Teacher aligns a formative quiz to the learning objectives, but doesn't pass until uh, after the unit test. What do you think? What type of feedback uh, it is for the students? So I went ahead and put a four in there. That's what I yes. think. Go ahead and put what you think. One, two, three, or four on how effective that is. Yes, I think here, yeah, four or three. Yes. Yes, I always tell my students, please make sure that you give me all work before the final test, because for final tests, you need to be prepared. You need to get as much feedback as possible prior so you can perform well on the test and test is our end goal to show that the, the objectives um, are mastered um, I agree three or four for me probably will be four honestly because if the student receives feedback when everything is over what it makes what what difference will it make um, however, I think we talked to Etnaila about this, uh, Chris, that it is hard sometimes to give feedback um, right away on the quiz prior to the test. So my suggestion would be to try to do it or to try to find a balance through the variety of activities to provide um, feedback. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. So another example. So I tried to, or uh, when I wrote this and when Yulia uh, wrote this as well, we, we talked, we tried to find examples that have happened to in, in real life, right? So teachers are so busy. So getting an assignment and grading it and then not being able to pass it back before the test. That's happened to me personally. And uh, all student work leading up to the test should prepare students for that test. So it doesn't really do much. Um, before the test. So um, here's another real life example that's kind of happened. Um, teacher assesses a writing sample on the rubric and writing rubrics a lot of times have teacher jargon, have, have a lot of teacher sayings that maybe students don't know. Okay. Some students don't know what fluency is or um, what, um, you know, uh, comprehensibility looks like. So some of those words we use on our, on our rubrics, students might not know that. So if a student gets a, a rubric back and they're not clear on what, what things mean, okay, what's, uh, how effective of that is, is that? So go ahead and put one, two, three, or four. So I see a couple fours and and, uh, and twos. I would say, um, yeah, it, again, it, it it depends on the student and it depends on what they're confused about. Um, but when we, we kind of shifted to more rubric-based grading, Ru the thing about rubric is if it gr gives great feedback as long as students know what the rubric is saying, okay? Um, if a student doesn't know what something means, they're not going to understand what what you're saying when you fill out a rubric. So um, we do a lot of things. Uh, we do a lot of things uh, that train students into uh, what what does rubric say and what what does success look like? So I think there's a comment here that says the rubric needs to be brief, clear, and understandable. Absolutely. Um, when that happens, rubrics are a great way to give feedback on um, something that might be a page long or a half a page. Um, it's a great way to give concise feedback um, and, and have in a very easy way to do. So, Yulia, you, you want to take this one? Yes. Um, teacher goes over answers uh, and has student check their work. What do you think? Yeah, I see three and two. 
And the answer is, it depends. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. I think it depends if, yeah, mm -hmm, good point. Not all students will follow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. But again, it depends. If I check the prior and then give it to the students and we go all together, uh, to check the work is one thing. When the students work in the groups, another thing. Uh, when I just say the answers, uh, it will be third thing. Um, I think to make it more effective, it would be nice to involve the students also to read the sentences or to write on the board the vocabulary that it needs to be uh, checked. Um, so to make students uh, more engaged, yeah, to keep students engaged in this activity. It would be helpful if the students feel comfortable, absolutely, to, uh, to stop the teacher and ask questions. Yes, absolutely. The students do <laughs> to check, yes. Um, but again, it is a quick way to check. And then the next step can be to collect their work for you as a teacher to look through and to receive feedback from the students um, for the next, to prepare for the next class or to talk to someone individually on their work or to praise them. All right. Um, so uh, here's one. Uh, so if a teacher writes, you need to include more examples in your essay. So um, how effective is that comment? So go ahead and say one effective, two somewhat, three eh, and four not effective, not very effective. Yep, so I, I see a couple of threes here, not very clear on what kind of examples to include. So yes, um, it's it's very difficult to be able to give individual feedback that um, that is in depth because we have so many students, right? Um, so uh, that does tell students something, but it's not individualized and it's, it could lead to more confusion, okay? So obviously they're trying their best, we assume that they're trying their best on all, all their work, okay? And so um, say, hey, how about an, an example of this? Or, hey, check this language structure and try this, okay? Um, is going to be a little bit more meaningful to them and then giving them an opportunity to redo it and hand it back in um, is, is going to be more successful there. Yeah, I would like to add also, Chris, one point that feedback, I read somewhere that feedback should be focused on only one goal. So if we talk about uh, more examples, what are we focusing? So we need to focus like only on the vocabulary or on grammar piece or um, on content. So uh, this, this presentation and some of the things that we were talking about is based on an article Yulia mentioned. Um, it's on the website, Educational Leadership. Um, and it's called the seven keys to, to formative feedback. Um, the seven keys uh, are goal reference. Okay. Do we know where, where we're going and any feedback and say, Hey, remember we're trying to do this and this is what you need to include next. Okay. So it's going to reference that goal um, and it's going to be transparent. Students know what is being said. Okay. Um, and why it's being said. Okay, that why is really huge with sometimes with teenagers. Why do I have to do this? Why am I wrong? Why is this, why is this a, a, a C? Okay, so being transparent, say, hey, this is not your best work or hey, this is a really great job. Okay, uh, that's their transparency piece. Also being user-friendly, okay? It, it uses simple language and we talked about that in the chat as well. Um, use simple language that uh, prevents confusion. Okay, so if something... Uh, if a student doesn't know what you're saying, they're not going to know how to adjust. Um, timely, we've talked about several times about, hey, feedback, the quicker, the quicker, the better. Okay. Um, I prefer activities where feedback is instantaneous. Okay. Um, rather than students turn something in and I, I spend my free time grading it. Okay. Because I have a life. And also, 
that takes a lot of time. Whereas if I can listen to somebody say something and give feedback or a, Hey, uh, we can do whiteboards and you write something and show me though. Those are opportunities that I can give feedback in the moment. And that's less to do at night. Um, and it's also more meaningful because it happens in the moment. Um, ongoing, uh, Yulia wrote, uh, talked about, is going to talk about the feedback loop. Okay. So it's ongoing. I'm constantly, uh, collecting data on where my students are and where do they need to go. Okay. Uh, and then when I say something and they do that, then we need to go to the next step and the next step it it's continuous rather than just, Hey, do this and it's done. Uh, consistent. What I tell one student should be what I tell other students as well. Okay. Um, I shouldn't have different ways to get to the same thing. Um, it, to the same goal. Okay. Um, student, I should be consistent with students and it should be actionable. So, Hey, try this. Okay. Um, try this, try that. Okay. And students have something to do afterwards that they can practice. So that's a quick rundown. And I know we go into a little bit uh, more detail here. So Yulia, you want to talk about goal yeah, reference? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, goal reference. And we talked about that um, information. Yeah. Feedback should relate it to the goal, to the objectives of the class. Um, uh, example, yeah, there is an example here. Thanks for submitting the work. You use the proposition correctly, which is related to the goal. Please make sure you change the ending of the words. So see the chart on Google Classroom. So that makes it clear what is my next step toward the goal. Um, tangible and transparent. So feedback should contain simple and direct language. Uh, sometimes teachers, as teachers, we focus on teaching rather than what students are perceiving and what they're learning. The learning process includes teacher receiving feedback from their students, as well as students receiving feedback from their teacher. Um, give students time to read teacher feedback and reflect on uh, performance. Okay, that reflective piece is really important. Uh, and an idea um, for novice teachers, record yourself and see, uh, see how things are going. What, listen to those student conversations that you might not hear. Um, what did I miss and what, what did I directly address? Um, you will learn a lot, uh, by, by doing so. Actionable. Yeah. Very, very specific. What needs to be done exactly and useful. So good job. Yes, it's good for building relationship, but how effective is that? If I say good job. Yeah. Um, examples. Yeah. Concrete examples. I really like that you use this and this and this past tense, uh, use this verbs. Yeah. Um, I included something about appraisal here. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. No, 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 no. I think, yeah, the students yeah, are bored in class. Yeah. So if uh, you get an appraisal, yeah, what does it mean, bored in class? More concrete, yeah, more specific. Yep. Uh, so I, that's, that, that's, uh, feedback's more observational rather than judgment. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I really like that, especially when we have our boss in, in the classroom. Sometimes they make judgments. They say, well, it's not as effective, or you had students goofing off. Okay. Well, that, what does that tell me as a teacher? Okay. Whereas if you say I have five students with their head down or five students on their phone, that tells me a little bit more information and it's specific. It's an observation rather than a judgment. If once we start judging is, is that's a difficult, um, that's a slippery slope and students could lose, um, could, could lose motivation there. Uh, User-friendly, the language used should be simple as possible. Highly technical language can confuse learners. Uh, try to reference only one goal at a time and don't overwhelm with feedback. Too much feedback can be overwhelming and don't offer advice until the learner understands the importance of the observed behavior. So uh, a lot of times I feel like I'm, hey, try this, hey, try this, hey, try this, without letting the student understand why I'm saying that. So that why is very, very important. Hey, this is what we're doing. This is what I'm trying to do. This is what I observe you doing. How do I, uh, how do we get there? Okay. This it's important to do this because rather than, Hey, try this and then move on. Okay. That advice feels like judgment and it, it's not as meaningful unless we attach a why to it. 
Timely, yeah. Sooner, better. Timely. Uh, Two-way street, yeah. The students receive feedback, and the teacher should be monitoring the performance as a form of feedback. So, to in order to create creative lessons, um, students can and should also be equipped to provide feedback to each other. And this is the skill that it takes time to build. At the beginning of the school year. We need to make sure that everyone feels comfortable in the classroom, then the, everyone feels comfortable working with each other. So it does take um, a little bit time. Uh, modeling, I think modeling can be uh, can work here very well. If I work with the students and I can model what I expect, or I can uh, provide some information that can be used to provide uh, positive feedback, like uh, simple sentences, um, stickers, um uh yeah so we kind of talked about this uh the feedback loop so feedback is ongoing so the feedback loop requires uh learners to take feedback on initial efforts and have the opportunity to do it again um while making those adjustments so um yulia found this great um uh image here so somebody submits feedback it's reviewed and then uh, responds. So the it, it's continuous. Um, so I, I really like the idea of, hey, it, it doesn't stop, okay? Um, if somebody turns something into me, a uh, homework assignment, and it takes two days, that, that feedback stops, okay? Whereas if I'm living in the moment and I'm running around talking with students um, or having them give their feedback to each other, okay? Then it's continuous and it's ongoing. Um, I here we're really big on formative and summative assessments. So formative assessments are assessments for learning. The purpose of formative assessments and uh, that goes along with feedback is I'm trying to help you learn this. Okay. Your summative tests, those are assessments of learning. Okay. That is your assessment of what do you know? Okay. Um, I would say most of the time I'm right here. I want students I, I'm giving assessments and feedback for the purpose of learning rather than the assessments of, hey, what do you know? Okay. Um, so, Yuli, you want to take consistency? Uh -huh. uh, consistent, yeah. Um, rubrics, then rubrics should be used for um, for all students. But again, prior, prior using a rubric, the students need to be taught how to use the rubric. Uh, they need to know what the high quality work looks like and what I do in my classes. I can give an example. Uh, I provide them with the uh, examples. This work uh, based, uh, this work is done on the rubric. I grade it this way and let's try to grade by yourself. How would you grade? I recorded myself talking about the weather, I think a couple of times, and the students placed me on the rubric. This is how they get to know uh, each other, uh, get to know uh, how to use the rubric, sorry. Awesome, I like that. Any way I can have that video? Sure. <laughs> so cool, that sounds awesome. I might steal that where you are, describing something and and or you're producing something and letting your students score you I, yes I, I, that's really cool so and add some transparency to that that's awesome so how can uh we use these essentials to enhance learning activities and propel learning forward so in a language classroom we really have four things that we need to assess and we need to give feedback on how well uh somebody listens to a target language writes a target language, reads and speaks. Okay. Um, <clears throat> for me, a, a lot of my feedback is going to be in this language production phase, the writing and speaking. This is the language that students produce. So um, I'm, I'm most concerned with, can you communicate something that you need to communicate with? I can't control who you are talking to. Okay. Um, or what you're reading. Okay, out there in the real world. But if you have a question or you have something that you need to communicate, can you do so? Okay. So yeah. um, this is yours, I think. Yeah. We have a couple activities how we can uh, provide good feedback. Yeah. Uh, so 
for listening. So with uh, your listening opportunities, how can we ass assess and give feedback for uh, listening? Uh, one thing that we focused on is opportunities to respond. Uh, in my school, I want students to respond as much as possible to the language I give. Okay. If I'm just giving language and they're not responding, they're not internalizing the language. So uh, something that I do is I just have a card with yes or no, or see or no. And then uh, I follow this pattern. So I, I can make a statement uh, in the second language. Okay. So this is Maite wants a cat. Okay. Then I ask a, a yes question about that. Does Maite want a cat? Okay. And then the class would say, yes, Maite wants a cat. Okay. Then I'm going to pick one part of the statement and ask a question about it. Does Maite want a dog? Okay. Well, here the answer is no. So they're going to hold up a card that says no. Okay. So by them holding up a card, I can see what they know and what they hear. Okay. And I can also give that feedback to that student that's, that's struggling. Okay. So by them holding up a card, sometimes I do choral repetition where the whole class says, see, or no, yes, no, but I can't really tell who is, who needs that extra support. So by holding up a card, yes, no, I'm able to see, Hey, that student might need some extra support. Okay. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a negative question and restate the original statement. So does might they want a dog? No, she doesn't want a dog. Might they want a cat? Okay. Then the next thing is ask an either or question. Does might they want a cat or a dog? Okay. And then they, this would be choral repetition. Might they want a cat? Okay. Then we can ask who, what, when, where, why, how, which is a lot more difficult of a question than a yes, no question. What does might they want? And then at finally the class is going to, um, be able to produce might they want a cat. Okay. And as language, we want to reinforce languages. So here you see want, and here you see cat. Okay. You see the word cat um, eight times. You see the word dog twice. You see the word quiere, which is an important word in Spanish, once. Okay. You see that one, two, three. You see that 10, uh, ten times. So though that is one way that we I assess listening skills. Okay. And I make learning visible. So I can assess how much you understand um, auditorily, what, how much you hear by holding up that card, yes or no. Okay. And this following this pattern helps me kind of uh, helps me formulate questions. So um, you, you want to talk about whiteboards? Sure. Yeah. Whiteboards. Yeah. Great way to provide feedback right away and to see what, what needs to be practiced more. Yeah. And uh, this is timely, user, user friendly. This will be a short hit, good job. Yes. Look at this word. Uh, uh, make sure that you capitalize. Yeah. So it's transparent. You give it um, um, goal reference. Yeah. Uh, user friendly. Um, so I think it's a great activity and it requires zero preparation. <laughs> Those are my favorite activities. <laughs> awesome. Um, I, I, I do this activity. Uh, I call Kines Picasso. Who is Picasso? So what I do is I present a paragraph in the second language and students have one minute to illustrate the paragraph. Then I break them in groups of three or four. And students share their drawing and defend why their drawing most accurately represents the paragraph. The teacher circulates the room giving positive content related feedback to drawings while acknowledging student creativity. Okay, so this, um, if I give a paragraph with multiple ways students can, can draw something, multiple ways that students can, can take this and run with it, okay, uh, then they, when they do so, they talk about it and they say, well, my paragraph has this because it says that, well, my paragraph has this, or my drawing has this because it says that. Okay. And then they're able to take a text, uh, a paragraph in the second language, and they're be able, they're able to visualize it. They're able to defend why, uh, why that's their favorite drawing. Um, and sometimes there are students that are more artistic than others. I really vote. I have students vote on their favorite picture 
and what most accurately represents the paragraph rather than the best. Okay. Cause if it's the best drawing, it's probably going to be the same student over and over again, because there's always one student that's just really artistic. Um, but that it's a way to, uh, give feedback, have students talk about it. Okay. And say, Oh, you're missing this. And it says that. Okay. And they're able to do that sometimes in my upper level class, hopefully they're able to do that in the second language, but even in my entry level Spanish classes, they can do that in English because I know they're reading. Okay. I, I can see based on their drawings, how much of that text they, they understand. Um, and therefore I'm collecting feedback on their reading. Okay. And it's a little bit more interesting and engaging than just here's an article, answer these questions. Um, and then the Chris, the next step you can do describe the picture where the students work in groups and describe the pictures, practicing the vocabulary and the information that they just read. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I haven't done I haven't done that. I'm gonna steal that, Yulia. You can <laughs> combine, that. yeah. Um self-assessment. Um Writing samples, I just talked about writing samples, yeah. The students can um, read the samples and they can uh, identify where it goes on the rubric and then to discuss it, the students can work in groups. You can make it as a video. I do like to make it more as a video uh, to get to know uh, to get to know the rubric. It works very well. And then with the samples they can create their own work as well cool. um click on the next slide please i don't think that i don't know i i just posted one picture and this is yeah this is a activity i um i um uh, found somewhere online and the students talk like we did with the picture but they describe a picture no drawings are involved and based on the description the students need to check uh, which picture is this a b c d it uh, brings a lot of um, um, a lot of um, enjoyment i would say uh, by learning the language um, a lot of fun because the pictures oh it's cell phone but which one cell phone does it have antenna or it's a smartphone I think it it requires students to pay attention to the details and that's what we want and long long term uh, that's what we want um, them to do yeah the same with the uh, houses so and um this activity is very very popular among my students they enjoy doing it and you can do it once so often, or you can do it when you do your fun activities. Yulia, do you do this in groups of two, three? Uh, groups of two. I would like groups of two because it is easier for me than monitoring and to listen as well. Okay. So one person sees this picture yes. and the other person it's doesn't. Right. Doesn't. And, and then I, I need to decide which picture were you talking about. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there are some different pictures for uh, different uh, topics. Cool. And, and that's, I just. Sorry, you, you, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I follow the link. My yeah, bad. No, that's, yeah. And then I guess that's all. So uh, this is, um, so. Yulia, uh, this is my email and here's Yulia's email. If you have any questions or if we can elaborate on anything we said, um, I know I've learned a lot from Yulia. I've learned from Yulia today um, and she's an amazing resource. And uh, I like to think that I know something about teaching. I don't know if I do or not, but um, I'm happy to ask any, answer any questions. If we said something um, that uh, you wanted to clarify, uh, you can send, send us an email. I know Yulia's uh, great with email and she'd be happy to answer your questions as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And we also have a little checklist where um, I put in some um, the the seven keys of uh, seven essential pieces of feedback. If you create something or if you are being observed and you need to make sure that there is a different type of feedback provided by the students, I can share as well. It's just a little checklist. 
Yeah, and yeah. we would like also, uh, yeah, questions, please. And uh, please, your feedback to us today. <laughs> that would be great. I don't know if our uh, code is working, Chris. Let me check. Yeah. So um, I know this checklist, Julius uh, says, and if you, if you, uh, I, I've used in my class when I, when I try and think of activities. Okay. I, I want to think, I want to maximize, uh, I want to maximize feedback. And so, and the different, uh, so having this checklist, okay. Is it timely? Is it ongoing? Um, is it consistent? Having those, having those in the back of my head really helped me design better lessons and better learning activities. So, um, Yulia has that if you, if you would like to reach out to her, um, or, or me. And, uh, like I said, it's helped me in the past. And Yulia, do you know if the, did you try this? Yep, the link is working. Yeah. If you would like to share some activities that you do, uh, we are compiling a, a document that we can then share later. Yeah. So go ahead and find, uh, fill out the QR code. Uh, and then any information you can provide us would be very helpful. Um, we'll stick around here. If you have any questions or comments, we're, we're happy to uh, clarify anything. Um, but we'll be on here and, and, uh, and answer any questions or comments. Otherwise, thank you. Uh, this has been fun. I, I, I really hope that this is, this has helped you. I know I've learned something. Uh, I did too. Today, so. <laughs> I did too. It is great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you. I just, uh, Ilya, you, um, Chris mentioned there's a video and that Ilya um, created. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, are you able to share it? <laughs> yeah, it is in German. I don't know if I can find it so fast, but it's in German. I I, I can explain. Um, so I prepared one of the students' assignment is to talk about the weather in a certain city. So I choose one city and I started very strong. I started talking fast. I used the vocabulary that we need. And then in the middle, I stopped. And I started talking very, very slowly. I made big mistakes, strong mistake. Um, and then at the end, I finished it strong again. And then when we discuss with the students, when we use the rubric, the rubric uh, that we use at LPS, and they said, how can we grade you? Because you started strong and then you made so many mistakes. So, and then we talked about to see the difference. So in one video, they were able to see the difference. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, that is what is uh, exceed expectations looks like, and that's what is uh, approaches expectations looks like. That's awesome. I like your you're so creative. I like your idea oh, of you. engaging thank the you. students and yeah, ask the yeah. students too. <laughs> Great. Yes, and at the same time, it took me only to record the video, but we were able to communicate using the vocabulary on the rubric to make it clear for the students. And at the same time, they saw an example what to do, what exactly is expected from the students to do. Yeah, that's awesome. A lot of times we give them our rubric and we just assume they understand. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But this is, I think, the key point. And by asking me to assess me, it also, uh, I feel like it's a, a part of building good relationship with the students because they're like, oh, I, I think you exceeded expectations everywhere. No, I did not. It's okay to... to Please be honest, be fair. That is part of it um, as well. I feel like it helps with the relationship. Yeah, you just inspired me to do one in Chinese. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I would like to see it, Crystal. <laughs> I will try to find time, you know, how busy I am. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I like the idea. I, it's you. You know, you two were so creative. There's, I just love your ideas and activities. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I hope it's uh, very helpful or give some clarity, uh, transparency <laughs> about teaching. <laughs> yeah, 
any questions? Does anyone have any questions or comments or anything? Do you have a, like a checklist or a flyer of the, uh, the, oh, but, all the elements yeah, of I feedback? Will, I will send it to you. Yes, I will send it to you tomorrow so you can share. Um, I would like to comment. Um, I do not know the name of the first person who described the picture. I thought this activity went so well. And I think we all learned that you can not just describe the picture, you can also ask the questions. And um, the uh, cultural piece, uh, the uh, picture was related to culture. So I think it was great. And uh, yes, only if I can say Shan, Shan. One? Shan okay, thank you. Sorry. Yeah, my name is Shan. You can just call me Shan. Oh, okay, nice to meet you. So, yes. and um, yeah, Sean, uh, when you uh, shared your activity, I was sitting here and checking out. Okay, it's timely manner. It's user friendly because she splits the big activity in small steps. Oh, this is goal reference because everyone is learning. <laughs> so you, <laughs> with your activity, you met all seven keys of the essential feedback. Wow, so that was a perfect Thank activity. You. <laughs> very much thank you so much you inspire us i like that yeah thank you very much i really appreciate this and um i have one more question are you comfortable sharing your slides or not yeah chris what do you think yeah absolutely can you send it to me so I can put like a PDF version? Okay, you website. can do it. Chris, I will do it tomorrow. Sounds good. <laughs> awesome. With the checklist. With the checklist. Does that work? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate in their listening, you know, activity, you listed all their types of questions. You know, sometimes I think, yeah, of course I can ask questions. I mean, that's too easy. You know, in the middle of the class, when you have so many students in front of you and everything going on, it's just, okay, what do I ask? Yes, yes, yes. It really and helps, so thank you. And to do so in the second language is difficult because I feel like I can ask questions, but I don't know if the questions I ask, my students will understand, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's yeah. like, I, I wanna say this, but you don't know how to say that. So if I say something that's above your head, I, there's the, you're not going to know what's happening. So it's my goal to, you know, if I want you here, my goal is to, to build you up rather than just start here. And so that, that's a challenge that world language teachers have, right? Yes, Be yes, able to yeah. use language that's challenging enough, but easy enough to understand. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that's true. You know, Chinese is my native language. So when I'm out of questions, sometimes I ask questions that are too difficult for them. It's like nobody understands. Then I just realize, okay, I never taught, I've never taught them this vocabulary. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's a challenge because it can be also bring some frustration from the students and the level of motivation will go down and that's what we want to avoid absolutely yeah yeah Larry. also yeah also when we um ask too many questions in you know in a i mean give feedback in a not very uh appropriate way i mean sometimes students are need some encouragement but we give uh, feedback in a very direct way Mm -hmm. they're not ready to to, to receive it, it. <laughs> yeah. and also culturally um there are differences as well students came from different cultural background yeah um i have a question on the assessment um i know um a formative assessment um, um so do you use uh some online like um uh online form of assessment like um for example i use canvas and you create a quiz right um what other um formative assessment would you like to use um 
I can answer, Chris, I can start. Uh, we do use Google Forms because we do use Google Classroom. And there is another um, a program, it's called Pear Deck. That's what we wanted to use today. I think, I don't know if you heard about that. Um, it is an interactive, I think it's like a smart board, but everyone gets access to it. And the students are able to draw pictures, to drag icon, or to write something and I can see it right away. It's like a little white board just on the screen. So uh, very successful among my students. And um, I like it because it's also provides a quiet atmosphere in the classroom where the students can focus better. Um, and then we use through our grade book some assessments are done, but there are more summative assessments are done through our grade book. Mm. So Chris, do you think about anything else? Yeah, so I try to I try to mix things up. Um, so um, I, I've used Google Forms. I love Pear Deck. Pear Deck is amazing because I can um, our students have uh, laptops and I can ask a question on the screen and they can type in their answer and I can see what they're what they're typing and then I can also see who's not typing right so if I have 20 students in my class I should have 20 students signed in and I should see 20 students writing um, and so that is just a way to to have students write and maybe those students that are uneasy about raising their hand and talking okay that's a way for them to to be able to produce language and me to give feedback on that and to collect feedback on that. Um, some other activities. So just a simple holding up a card, yes or no, or um, right or wrong, true mm -hmm. or false, uh, is a way to, to collect feedback, right? Uh, if somebody gets something wrong, then I can address I can address that as a class. Hey, I see a lot of people have said this was false. This question is actually true. Let's go back and talk about it. So just something simple like that, I, I do all the time as well. Um, because I want, if I make learning visible, then if I make learning visible, then I'm able to give feedback really easy. Okay. So um, I do like comment cards. I do whiteboards where you hold it up and I can check real quick each student. Um, I actually prefer that form of feedback, um, giving feedback uh, and those activities. Um, again, because if if I have something to grade, then sometimes I get busy and it I, I don't grade it right away. And so if I can grade it in the moment, I can see what a student's thinking. Okay. I, if I can make that learning visible and I can see what they're thinking, then I can have that conversation with them face to face. And to, to me, that's really successful and uh, has made my life easier, actually. Um, if you talk about technology the other way, I'm thinking Flipgrid. The, the students, when they record themselves, they do not like to record themselves. However, I ask them to put the sentences on the screen uh, so they can, there is an option to share the screen so they will not see themselves. I will not see them. But if we talk about reading out loud or practicing intonation, that would be a great way. And as far as I know, uh, there is a comment also, but I like to do individuals, individualized comment. And that's how we, we start. I usually don't ask the students to, uh, to record themselves because they don't feel uncomfortable. And I, I do not share their responses. So no one can see the responses except for me. So yes. the setting you are setting, I will use a flip grade. So you, on the yeah. setting, so you can let students see each other, but no, no comments. Yes, I don't do comments and I don't let see each other. Oh, okay. Because they don't, as a, as a step one. Yeah, later when they are more comfortable, probably, I don't know, it would be okay. But at first I don't do it because I need to make sure that they feel comfortable using it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair. I felt like it was a great session. I felt like I learned a lot from everyone today. Oh. Thank you. 
Yeah, you made it timely. It's perfect. <laughs> the topic's perfect and the discussion is perfect. Great. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you for your feedback, Crystal. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for doing thank this you. one. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, -bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Have a nice evening. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Yes, thank you. Thank you.